I am the Apprenticeship Coordinator for Healthcare Programs at Hudson County Community College. And I'm joined by Samaya Yashieva, who is the Assistant Director for Healthcare Programs for Continuing Education and uh, Continuing Education and Workforce Development and the Center for Business and Industry. We're also joined by Madeline Cartia, who is also another one of our colleagues, and she's going to be taking, uh, taking questions at the end of this. So we are talking about healthcare. Um, before we get started on this, I just want to say that the contact information will be throughout the, the presentation as well as at the end. So if you need um, an email address or a phone number, please, please look for it throughout. And we will welcome any questions in the chat box, but we will answer them all after the presentation. Um, all of you are muted. Um, I think if there, if anybody has something to say at the end, I think we can unmute you. Uh, we'll have to check on that. Um, so first, why healthcare? Why now? And why Hudson? Now, when you're talking about healthcare. The next couple of slides will actually indicate where healthcare jobs are going. Um, it leads to employment opportunities. Healthcare is a very hot place to be right now for work. Um, there are, it's an, also an industry that will always be there. Um, there are super great career pathways that you can take in healthcare. You can start at a lower level and build on it as a stackable healthcare credential um, in the way that we say it. And uh, there are short term programs that you can get you instantly into um, the healthcare, uh, a healthcare position um, that, that will then lead you into um, a higher employment opportunity. It's also very low cost, um, these programs are, these certificate programs. Now, we all know why Hudson is fantastic, and that's because it's been providing. Um, quality education to the, our neighbor, our community for years. Um, it's a great sure way to uh, get something that will provide you um, for the future um, and allow you to get, uh, to get a good education and, and be part of this community, which is what we all really want. So I'm going to show you two slides. Now, this is one slide is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it is talking about um, healthcare, healthcare support job growth in the next nine years. It started in 2019. I've highlighted at the top the yellow, which indicates that healthcare support is, is the fastest growing job or predicted to be in the next nine years. Um, it's five of the top 20 sectors. You can see the quote at the bottom. And again, it's from the Labor of Statistics, which is a very um, solid, reputable place to uh, get some information from. We also have this one, which is interesting because it's a growing gap of unfilled jobs. So you can see the purple line at the top. That is the number of openings for in healthcare. Um, within, and it's huge, it's grown enormously. The bottom green line is the number of hires, which indicates the difference between the amount of people that are actually in healthcare and getting hired because, and the amount of jobs that are available, which indicates that we really need great people like you to come in and fill those jobs. Uh, for this is a list of our certificate programs at Hudson County Community College within the continuing education and workforce development program or department. Um, as you can see, there are several of them. Some are just ancillary programs, but um, all are certifications and we'll get into it a little bit more now. Now the certified EKG technician um, is hands-on training, lead placement, um, troubleshooting, you're talking about the heart and monitoring it. It's 80 hours. Um, we're giving you the courses in hours because due to the amount of time, the weeks might be different. We are not entirely sure of the classes yet, of how long the classes will be. 
Um, so that is a, a reason to contact us for sure. This is taking vital signs um, and it's universal precautions. The next one is certified home, home hemodialysis technician. This one is, um, it's the skills and knowledge to function as part of a clinical team. And it can be acute, um, which is hospital hemodialysis, or it can be chronic, um, I'm, which is outpatient. Um, you have to have interpersonal skills. It is very much a, a, a you're talking to the person and dealing with them. Um, it includes basic life support and first aid, um, as well as a, a certified hand therapy skills development in some cases. Um, this one is 350 hours. This one is an enhanced certified nurse aide. Um, nurse aide, certified nurse aides are very much in demand right now. Um, this certificate program is 125 hours, and we will talk a little bit more um, further in our information session about the apprenticeship aspects of it. There is, um, this is one, this is one position that has really been in demand right now with the, with the um, pandemic that we're dealing with. There is an, um, down in the bottom left corner, you can see that there is an, there's an eight hour um, webinar that you can take that will give you a temporary certified nurse aid. Now it, it is temporary, so you absolutely must know that. We, they've, the um, facilities have been given clearance to hire these people until deemed um, safe for the pandemic. So it would be, I think it was extended by another six months um, currently. So if you go online and take that eight hour um, webinar and take and then email us the number that you have done, that number that you have done, we'll try to help you get a position at a facility. And the good thing about this is that if you are really into becoming a certified nurse aide, enhanced certified nurse aide, um, this will get you working straight away with an employer. Um, and so there are lots of opportunities for that. Um, this is obviously, it, it does require an, a tremendous amount of one-on-one -on -one, um, and dealing with people. Um, patients in all aspects of long-term care facilities, um, and it's monitoring their lives and just helping them stay safe and get what they need to get. The next one we have is a certified phlebotomy technician. This program is 90 hours. Phlebotomy uh, is one of those positions where you can't be scared of blood because you absolutely have to be used to it. Um, it is blood withdrawal and it's you know requirements and the importance of testing the blood. Um, it provides the background that you need for all aspects of laboratory skills and specimen collection. Now, again, let me just point out that there is an email address down in the bottom left of your screen. So please write it down if you have any questions about any of these specific programs. This is a patient access representative. Um, the program is 245 hours. It is, um, these are the people that greet you at the front desk. They are the ones that have to have the utmost of professionalism and take your information. Um, it is in a medical office or in a hospital. So it's, it's really important that you like dealing with people one on one but this is not this isn't like phlebotomy this isn't dealing with the healthcare aspect of it in that respect you have to understand it but you also have to make sure that you can talk to people and um, interact with them in a in a way that makes them feel comfortable the next one we have is called a fast track patient care technician these are a little bit a little bit of a step up from a CNA and you do need to have a CNA certification in order to, to um, attend this program. Program is 210 to 250 hours. Um, it is everything from health everything in healthcare from vital signs um, to you know helping lift patients. 
it will also be draw possibly drawing blood for specimens. Um, you will learn a tremendous amount of of aspect to it because you're going to learn phlebotomy, you'll learn EKG, and you'll learn BLS, basic life or BLS. Um, it is it's a great program. It's also very much in demand. It's in one it's one of those supports um help those healthcare support jobs that um, people are looking for. Uh, and it is a stepping stone also for the healthcare industry. So if you get your CNA and then you get your PCT, um, you can go on to become a nurse. You know, you have to obviously build those in an appropriate manner. Um, but it's a good, it's a good program. This one is a pharmacy technician, and this also is very much dealing with people one on one. It is not, however, in a in a more clinical setting. It's in a it's in a pharmacy. Can sometimes be in a hospital pharmacy, but it is making sure that people do get their correct dosages and the correct medicines that they need. It's learning about all of those different medicines. You're dealing with people at the counter and helping um, and educate them in what they need to know about their different medications. This is 250 hours and it is all online. We have some more information coming up for pharmacy technic technician too when we start to talk about apprenticeships. So again, these are all our certificate programs. Um, it's important to remember that. This is basic life support. It's a five hour class. A lot of people need to do this to top up their um, healthcare education. So we offer this um, fairly regularly. Let us know Clara is the one who is responsible for this, um, this program. And it's only five hours. So if you do need it, um, let us know. The next one we have is NLN pre-admission exam. Now, if anybody is interested in getting into nursing, this is the pre this is the pre-admission exam that you have to take in order to get into a program. It is it helps you study for or it help gives you the all of the information that you need to do it um, in order to get admitted into a nursing program. Now, keep in mind you are not automatically admitted into Hudson if you do take this exam with us, but I guarantee you, you will get a top notch education on how to take the exam and what sort of information you need to know. There is quite a bit of um, math and science on it too, which is good. Now, the next one is, is a certificate program right for you? Um, so certificate programs, as I said, as we discussed at the beginning, they're they generally tend to be shorter term and they do allow you then to work um, in a shorter amount of time. But you need to think about as somebody who is interested in this informational session, think about where you wanna work um, when you're thinking about certificate programs. And part of that is, what we suggested with the patient access representative, which is the front line being professional and dealing with people on that level. There is also this, there's the um, enhanced CNA, which is very much working with patients and helping them. Um, so there are different options for you, uh, depending on, I, I spoke to one woman who said she really wants to get into healthcare, but she's absolutely terrified of blood, probably not a CNA or a PCT. You might want to go for, um, you could do medical assistant on the degree side, or you could do a public, or, um, you see, or you could become a PAR. The other, the another thing to think about is what your financial resources are. Um, some of the classes are self-pay. There's a tremendous amount of financial aid out there for people who um, qualify it's important to look into it and to get some information about what you need. The good thing is, is that a lot of these certificates are on the lower end of cost and they are quick so you can get into um, the program that you want to get into. Career progression is another one. That one is, um, you know, time and commitment. You may not have the time right now to become a nurse full to put full time um, into your education to become a nurse. But a lot of these certificate programs will enable you to work and continue on with your education if you so choose. 
the nice thing about them is that you can progress. Um, you can, some of these programs, you can even top up if you are already a CNA. And we go back to the first couple of slides that I showed you, which is the high demand for health professionals. I can't stress enough how important that information is. Now, of course, there are some acceptance requirements. Um, these are general. Some of the programs require a little bit more than this. Um, in terms of drug testing and that uh, drug testing is the main one that I can think of, but you should be 18 years old, um, have a high school equivalent, high school diploma or equivalent. Um, if you are from a different country, there are definitely, let us know there are places where you can get your um, high school education evaluated. Um, there, you need to have a criminal background check, which we can send you the information for, and it is free. Um, event, some of the programs require fingerprinting, which will be a charge. Um, that's generally explained in the certificate program that you attend. Completion of medical clearance. Now, medical clearance is, is you really need to um, pay attention to this, and it is, you know, it's partially it's vaccinations. Um, there is the, the immunization records, um, for example, with tuberculosis, there are different tests that you can get for that, which we would be happy to explain. Um, and then, and if you are from a different country, I know that sometimes people are inoculated for um, TB, and so that would require then an x-ray of your test um, that's two years or younger. Um, but we would be happy to inform you of all of that information if you are interested and have questions. Um, you have to be a U.S. citizen or a res resident, which means you have your working papers in order. Um, if you are coming from unemployment, I know that unemployment and one stops often have referrals. Um, so if that is part of your of your unemployment, um, of the necessity of your unemployment, then we would need to know that. Ninth grade level English and math are both um, both required. We do have a test that you can take that's called the TABE test, which is fairly inexpensive. And we are um, we're, we are attempting to get it online, but thus far it's not. So you would have to make an appointment with us to take it. Relatively inexpensive, as I said. Um, so please let us know if you're interested in taking that and we'll let you know. Obviously, basically computer, basic computer literacy is a very good, important thing to have, um, depending kind of on which certificate program you would like to take. But it is good to know. And then there will be some administrative requirements in addition that we'll need to have you fill out. And those are just the normal working types of things that um, you have to have for to apply to a certificate program in general. Again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I will be happy to answer them at the end. Now, I'm not an expert in funding. I do know that these are available at Hudson and federally and statewide. Can't promise you that all of them are available and all for everybody. Um, one of the things we do want is to talk about that, and we'll, we'll mention it um, in a few minutes, is the first one, which is the NJ HealthWorks Scaling Apprenticeship Grant. This is a really great program. So that we do know about. Um, these others, we would be happy to find out any questions. Um, I actually had one woman at an info session ask about if unemployment from New York would transfer to New Jersey, and I still haven't been able to find out that question. Obviously, unemployment is, um, they're really backed up these days. So I do not know the answer to that question. I continue to look and ask both our people and um, unemployment. So if anybody knows, please let me know, let me know, put it in the chat. Um, other than that, there is the, you know, there's the GI Bill. There is quite a bit of, there's always employer, no, sorry, there's not always. There is also some um, employer tuition reimbursement. So you could always ask your employer about it if you are interested in taking a certificate program that would in, enhance your skills at that employer. <clears throat> so please let me know if you have any questions about these. I will do my best to answer them. 
And now we're going to go into the first um, funding that I was talking about, which is the New, Jer New Jersey Health Work Scaling Apprenticeship Grant. So Hudson was given this grant with um, several others in a consortium of colleges to help people increase their education and knowledge in healthcare. This is a program that is earn while you learn. So you have to be employed to take this program. Um, we can aid you in looking for a job. And as we discussed with the CNA program before the enhanced CNA, that eight hour, uh, that eight hour webinar is a great way to get employment now and to qualify for this apprenticeship. Um, it's education, so you will get educated through uh, Hudson County Community College, and then you will do a certain amount of hours on the job to confirm that you have learned and perfected the skills needed for that position. Um, the, you also can gain an industry recognized credentials, which is your certificate for this um, for whatever for one of these programs. And the three programs that we have that are certificate programs currently in um, in CEWD, the Continuing Education and Workforce Development, is the Enhanced Certified Nurse. Aid, which we talked about before, but just as a quick refresher, it is the um, it's the dealing with patients one on one and helping them maintaining their life, maintain their lives, um, monitoring them and making sure that they get changed and fed. And so it's very much a, a hands on job. The fast track patient care technician, which is a step above that, so it can be in terms of um, helping take blood, working with the nurses to maintain um, the health of the different people you're dealing with. And then pharmacy technician, which is the, the certificate that deals with pharmacies and um, dispensing drugs. Um, these three we currently have, have been approved for this grant. Um, we are looking for people to do it. Again, I'll remind you that the fast track patient care technician requires a CNA certification um, and then stress that the CNA has the eight hour program that that um, you can begin working straight away with an employer. Um, we will answer any questions about these three. Um, please let us know if you do have questions. Um, and I'm going to talk now about, so one of the things that Hudson is known for is its health sciences department. It has an incredible nursing program um, and other health sciences. So the, the, when I've done these information sessions in the past, there have been a lot of questions about how to get more information about nursing and medical assistance. Um, so that is part of, there is a degree and a certi certificate program aspect of Hudson that is different from us. We work hand in hand, but it is a different group of people that you need to contact for it. So this next slide will show you, oh, whoops, I'm sorry, I skipped it. I'm going to do this first. These are the people, write them down if you have questions about these different degree and certificate programs. Of course, you can always contact us. We'd be happy to give you information. But these are the people for these specific programs. Um, and I will come back to that in just a moment because I wanted to tell you the steps to apprenticeship. So ultimately, what you really, what you, to stress one thing in particular is you do need to be employed for the apprenticeship. Now, if you send the send the information to CEWD Healthcare at hcc.edu, include your name, your phone number, and the program of interest. Please also, and it's not on this list, but it's crucial, let me know if you are working at a medical facility. Um, nursing home, any place of with that that is an, that is a healthcare providing place, um, so that we can possibly approach them and we'll talk about um, getting you into the apprenticeship. 
once you email that information, we will send you the steps of what you need to do in order to become a an apprenticeship. You know, there will obviously be some, um, we'll need to analyze like your medical records and that kind of thing. And then we can help you complete everything um, to hopefully get on your way to this apprenticeship. I'm going to flip back down to these programs because I feel I did not give it enough time. And if you do have any questions about these, just pop them in the chat because I can explain to you what the different programs are here. Um, again, I'm not the person to just to, to um, talk to in specifics about it but I can certainly add, answer any questions about the different programs. Uh, on to questions. As I said, Samaya is with me. She is the Assistant Director for Healthcare Programs. Um, I am Betsy Varnum. I'm the Apprenticeship Coordinator for Healthcare Programs. Um, or health, yes. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions feel free to email us. I would love to, we would love to help you out in any way that you need. Um, and now I am going to ask Madeline, who is currently muted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Madeline. Um, Hi. Do you see any questions in the chat? So we do actually have one. Um, somebody did write, I graduated with Certified Medical Assistant. Could I? be able to go back to HCCC and get any of these certificates. If you already have your CNA certification, you could come to us and I think that's what you said, right? Maybe I need to turn up my volume. CNA. The medical you have a sort of CNA certificate certificate. You are completely primed to do the PCT, the fast track PCT then, because that's one of the requirements, but absolutely you can come back to HCCC and get another certificate. That's what we're talking about, especially with the apprenticeship on building on different skills. So please send us an email, let us know, and we will um, give you the information for that. Um, she's talking about the uh, certified medical, medical assistant. assistant. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, I misunderstood assistant. that. <laughs> I like I said, my my computer is very quiet because I, I was busy. I was uh, chatting with her. Uh, it seems like uh, she, Allison, right, uh, doesn't have, um, wasn't able to complete this uh, medical assistant. What um, I recommend, Betsy, can you go back to the slide with all the um, programs? Absolutely, the, the, this one. Yes. With and the information. Uh, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Nakla will be um, your coordinator for medical assistant to make sure you you contact with her to make sure that <clears throat> she'll let you know what, what's the next step. But um, it doesn't matter what program you graduated from, Hudson County Community College, you can always come back to us and take any program you wish to take. And um, like Betty said, but if you're planning to take the CNA, patient care technician, then you will have to have a CNA. I see the, um, Madeline, you see more questions, right? Yes, yes, I do. I was just waiting until, huh? so the next question is from Laura, do I have to take the ninth grade test if I'm already a Hudson student? I have a job, but not in the healthcare system for their partnership. That would be a no. If you do, you want to answer some I or shall I? No, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, um, no, if you are currently a Hudson um, student, you do not take. They're they're required to have a 2.0 grade point average for it, but you do not need to take um, the test again if you have the if you have that. And also, it depends. Um, you have to um, complete the college level classes and also provide us with your unofficial make sure it, we don't do not need official because official costs money you have to pay ten dollars we need unofficial uh, transcript and how you get that unofficial transcript is when you uh, go to your portal you'll be able to just print it out and uh, email to us okay 
Okay. Next question is, what would you recommend someone who is just starting this fall and I'm taking basic classes right now? I'm going to school for medical assistance. Okay, I didn't hear that. I can repeat it, no problem. Um, from Jennifer, what would you recommend someone who is just starting this fall and I'm taking basic classes right now? I'm going to, I'm going to school for medical assistance. Okay, what I would recommend is, um, it depends. Again, like I, like I always say, it's not the program, um, it's not the student fit the program. I always say that the program has to fit, must do, if you wanna uh, fit the student at this moment in time. And it's something that you uh, have to enjoy. For example, uh, some of my students, they say that they, love to work one-on-one -on -one with patients and other students saying you know what i want to be behind the scene i wanted to be by the desk that's what i love to do chloroquine job and you will have to uh, determine which one uh, you are uh, more comfortable you prefer to do before you uh, sign up for any programs and what i we all me and betsy always do we interview you before we um, start the registration process for the program to ensure that this is the program you need. Email us and um, with your name, phone number, and let us know what program you think you need, or uh, you think that you would like to go for. And let's talk more in details about hours and schedule, and um, we'll take it one-on-one. -on -one. I think that's really beneficial and if you're if you're thinking medical assistant, you could also I, I don't know what your thought process is be behind medical assistant, but you could do the CNA and work while you're taking basic class, like after you've gotten the CNA and achieved that certificate and work while you're I don't know what your situation is. So yes, as Tamaya said, let us know and we'll talk to you about it. Okay, the next question is. I work with a healthcare company now, but I'm interested in getting my PCC. Um, in order to get that, would I have to get my CNA? PCT, you have to get, you have to have a CNA to get it. You have to have the CNA certificate to get your PCT. Did I answer that correctly? I'm, again, I can't hear very well, so. Madeline, it was PCT, right? Yeah, PCT, yeah. <laughs> to get to the program, and also one thing I wanted to mention to you guys, um, I'm also going to open up uh, for self-pay, uh, EKG and phlebotomy, and remember, the because due to COVID-19, the spots are really um, limited. It's um, big due to the, uh, what's it called? To the room size and everything, we cannot uh, fit a bigger class. And mm -hmm. if you're interested to do, for example, EKG or phlebotomy separate, let us know. For that, you don't need to have CNA. It's just um, what I always tell my students are that um, CNA, pay, fast track patient care technician is um, something that you can. Um, Work in the hospital and having the CNA certification is only going to benefit you because if you just just for um, when you have time, uh, do some research, go on the website Barnabas Health or Hackensack or University Hospital, any of them, and put patient care technicians. See if they require CNA certification. And um, if you think that that's only what you need or please let us know, you know, and uh, sometimes students come to me, they, they only need EKG because their job is waiting for them, you know, and um, that's fine. Just let me know what you need. I just don't want uh, you guys to be confused, whereas the EKG and phlebotomy separate on its own, it doesn't make a patient care technician. What makes a patient care technician is if you have CNA certificate, EKG and phlebotomy. Even if it's separate, three certifications 
um, makes kind of makes you uh, to, uh, to a patient care technician or the other route is um, what we have is I always give my students more chances to pass and get more certification to help them to get uh, more variety of jobs. It's uh, CNA, then you get EKG and phlebotomy and patient care technician certification all in one program. But uh, it depends what you guys are looking for. And when you email us your name, your phone number, we'll give you a call and we'll talk more about it. Okay. Um, for the next question, for the CNA, is it only for New Jersey that we're able to find work? Um, there actually are. Do you want me to take that? Yes, <laughs> because uh, CNA and um, CNA in every state is different. Due to COVID-19 right now, they allowed people with CNA, with New Jersey uh, CNA certification to work in New York just for now. In general, um, students who had, uh, for example, New Jersey certificate had to do extra step to be able to work in New York. And um, I had also a student who worked, literally worked in New York and had a certificate, wasn't able to work in New Jersey. She she took the whole class to uh, um, from scratch, took the exam, paid for it and everything to be able to work in New Jersey. Uh, but this, um, this eight hour, the eight hour um, temporary certificate, however, is does extend to New York. New York is one of the states that, is a, that will allow you to work there as a CNA. But again, it's just a temporary stopgap. Yes, and make sure it's um, it's uh, only the only as of as much as I know, I work with employers. It's only they only hire in uh, nursing homes. It doesn't mm -hmm. apply to the hospitals. Only nursing homes. Even nursing homes, kind of like it depends how needy they are for CNAs. They would hire because um, eight hour uh, training is not enough to cover everything. That's what the employer says, but it's the best way to start working, making money. They actually pay you the same, I believe $12 or 12 or $13. And um, as soon as we start back to the uh, providing CNA training, you will be able to come back to us and take the full training and just continue to work. Okay, the next question is, I am an alum with HCCC. Can I take the certificate program with Hudson while at another university? Depending on the program, how flexible are the hours? You can take, like I said, <laughs> any programs you wish to. We would be more than happy to help you. And um, it doesn't matter what other um, university or colleges you are enrolled at this moment, as long as you are, avail you are available. Most of our courses, for example, um, patient, fast track patient care technician mm -hmm. usually run um, from 5 to 10, 5 to 10, 5 to 9 evening class, and it's uh, during the week. For example, the other class, CNA, also uh, evening class, we may, I'm not sure at this moment, uh, may open up the weekend class for CNA. And also... Um, Farm tech is 100% online. Uh, I'm still, we was, we're still working on it and a pharmacy technician. And also um, hemodialysis is going to be hands-on. That class is going to be three times a week uh, from uh, nine to five from Monday, Wednesday and Fridays, for example. And the classes that I, I spoke before, EKG and phlebotomy separate EKG and separate uh, phlebotomy, we are planning to schedule them on weekend, like Sunday and Monday, uh, Sunday and Saturday. And uh, it's going to be a little bit longer, but that's going to help students, especially who is working during the week, to be able to take the class. And it's going to be hybrid, which means a lecture portion of the class is going to be online. And when the time is to hands-on, 
join the blood and do the EKG on all that, you will do in the classroom, in the lab at Hudson County Community College. Okay, the next question is I have a, oops, I have a HHA license. Mm -hmm. I work in a nursing home. I do assistant living, but I would like to have a CNA license. How can you help me? Okay. Um, if I only, can you text that person back and ask which nursing home is she working at? She or he working at? And um, at this, just one of the H, um, HHA, it's uh, a little bit different. HHA is something that person is going to the patient's home and taking care of them. It's not the same as CNA. In my opinion, that uh, CNA is a little bit more robust because when you go to nursing home, you're not taking care of one person or two people. Mm -hmm. You're taking care of the whole, if not, I, I'm not I, I never worked at the nursing home, but it's more than five for sure. More than five for sure. And they said I, they, oh, yeah. I was gonna say they work at Hudson Hill Senior Living. Hudson Hill. Um, what we can do is um, email us, email your employer or whoever you think that we can contact from HR. What we can do is we can connect with them. We can sign up um, affiliation agreement. We and we can start a apprenticeship program, which will help you and cover your expense for the program. And Betsy can talk more about that. But email us and let us know what's the employer, their name, and um, your information. And that actually goes for any of you who are currently working at a facility, a healthcare facility. Let us know because the, the apprenticeship program does require that you are working, but we would be happy to make contact with your employer to see if we can um, get get you in the apprenticeship program. The next question, what is the deadline to roll in the nursing program? Deadline for nursing program? Uh, Betsy, can you do me a For that, <laughs> yes, I was just gonna go back. Uh, the, the slide, What? Uh, do me a favor, if you guys are interested in that, uh, take a picture of the contact person and email them. And um, because I don't want to say something that I don't know about. Right. And, right. Um, registered nurse is Suzanne Samson and uh, Lisa. I cannot pronounce the last name. But I know Lisa is really nice and she's really helpful. Okay. Email her. Take a picture or the Snapchat, and I'll be able to. Um, they will be able to. And if anything, you can always go to HCCC um, register nurse, and it will show you contact person, what classes to take, what is it included, and all the prerequisites. Everything is there. And if you need your NLN exam, you can come to us. Not an exam, but a preparation. The pre-admission test, yeah, or the pre-admission study yeah. course, yeah. To make sure that uh, you're ready before you take the exam. Mm -hmm. And also, okay. oh. registered nurse need BLS. If you need BLS, you can also come to us and uh, you can take that too. Next one, Madeline. It, it, the next one is, when does the CNA program start? million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why, I'm sorry, Betsy, I just wanted no? to overview. Okay. You take it with the apprenticeship. Uh, the reason why the CNA program is on hold right now is due to uh, COVID-19. Um, nobody, the nursing homes where we do clinical rotation, which is 40 hours from 90 of the CNA program, we are not allowed to do, we cannot do right now because um, nursing homes are not allowed anybody from outside to get there. That's why we're kind of on hold. But we suggest students who are interested in doing CNA 
take this eight hour course, take the exam, and you have uh, three chances to take the exam. And if you pass, they give you a certificate, temporary CNA certificate. With that certificate, you literally can go to any nursing home that around you or you would like to work, show them the certificate, let them know that you want to work. And if they're in need of CNAs, they will hire you. And then when we open up, you will be able to take the class. And maybe this way you can participate in our apprenticeship. That that's And in addition, to. if you do this and you take this, you get hired as a temporary CNA um, at a facility. Please let us know so that we can let you know when the CNA programs are opening again or touch base with your employer to see if we can if we can get you in the apprenticeship program that way. Madeline, next. Yes, the next question. Am I able to use any of these certificates for California? I am interested in the patient access representative. Yes, you can. Sorry, Betsy. Yes. That's no, I was going to ask you. Yes, yes. Um, all. Uh, most of our certificates are nationally recognized. I'm really proud of that. And only CNA certification is by state. Everything else, patient care technician, hemodialysis, patient access representative, all of them are um, nationally recognized. Just the CNA is by state. Yes. Next one. The next one is, how long does the phlebotomy program run for? Can I join for the winter slash summer? Okay, uh, phlebotomy, like I said, if you would like to do just phlebotomy program, um, we are planning to start on November and phlebotomy course is 90 hours. I'm planning to uh, schedule in the way of the, it's going to be like a weekend course. And it's like uh, four hours Saturday and four hours uh, uh, Sunday. And um, the course, and at the end of the program, you will be able to sit for um NHA exam is national recognized and credential like I mentioned before is recognized throughout the uh, United States any state you go it's valid as long as it's not expired it's uh the dates make sure that the dates mm -hmm. next question I just got my CNA certification to get PCP is this certificate transferable out of state? A PCT, yes, fully, yes. Like I, it's a national recognized certificate from NHA. National career, um, I had just had that. Um, the CNA certificate is not, however, no. transferable. It's there's there's not reciprocity with the CNA certificate. But if you become a PCT, then you, it is transferable. Yeah, it's National Health Career Association. It's, yeah. You can actually, let me put on chat. If you go to just put NHA and you'll be able to see all the programs and all the information. Did I just text one person? I am not seeing it. Uh, Madeline, next question. Okay, so the next question is saying I currently work for direct support. I want to get my CNA while the hours for the classes, but you said the uh, classes you don't have the hours yet. Is that correct? I'm so sorry, I couldn't understand. <laughs> I couldn't hear you either. Oh, it's oh, I currently work for direct direct support. I want to get my CNA. What are the hours for the classes? The hours are at this. Um, as soon as we were able, as soon as we able to provide the course, it's going to be 125 hours, which includes uh, 90 hours of uh, CNA certification. It's include five hours of um, 
basic life support and the rest hours is going to be for soft skills to ensure that your resume is right um, all together and ready to send to the employer. But what I would recommend you to do is to take the, um, the link that Betsy is talking about. What I'm going to do is, Betsy, can you do me a favor? Actually, yes, send to everybody the link. I shall. I shall. Can I go back to just um, copy and paste, and you'll be able to get all the information you need. And I would suggest you to um, bookmark that um, page. Um, Madeline, I will take a next question. Okay. Uh, the next question is, how do I go about completing the eight-hour temporary CNA certificate? I am also a HCCC student. Okay. Um, Eight hour uh, CNA certification, a uh, temporary CNA certificate. When um, Betsy already put the link, you literally take that link, copy and paste on Google on the search, and you will get all the information. And um, Betsy, will you be able to do that? Okay, can you can you do it? Can you share your screen when you uh, put the link on the search? I just put it in chat. I cannot actually show you the front of it. No, because I've only shared this okay. screen. Okay. So you can pull it up and it this is this goes directly to the page that you need for this certificate. And literally read the steps. I, I sent to Very so many easy. students. And um I remember a couple of my students, I sent a link in a couple hours, like the next day, maybe they like text me back and said, Samaya, I already took it, I passed it. You know what I mean? It's literally eight hour video you watch and then they give you three chances to do to take the test. You don't need to pay anything for it's it. Free. It's free. Yes. And um, it's actually I always recommend students this way. You kind of like I have a bigger picture of what's in that class, what kind of questions and what it takes to become a CNA. And uh, if it doesn't work, the link doesn't work, yeah, you are not successful, please email Betsy or mm -hmm. me. Let me know. Yeah, and we will be able to help you and guide you what to do next. Next medal. That is all for now. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, wait, did I miss one? Actually, um, how much is the CNA course? Did I ask that? I can't remember. <laughs> Um, CNA course, like I said, at this moment, we have grants. Um, it's still in the pending. I cannot uh, fully announce the grants, but we are by November, probably uh, before actually uh, CNA certificate, uh, CNA program gets um, fully available for the students. The grant can probably going to be active already. What I want you to do is um, email us, let us know what mm -hmm. programs are you um, thinking of taking and we'll work with you. And um, the, the main credentials for this uh, grants that I am talking about, besides the apprenticeship grant, is um, people who are unemployed, who lost the jobs due to COVID-19, uh, and also people who are underemployed who needs help to get back to, to work, to get some kind of credential certificate, or maybe people who are changing their career and they need to do the certification program to, or to get to the next step, okay? It's a lot of uh, opportunity. I just want you to make sure that you guys are reach out to us. Let us know what exactly <clears throat> um, your situation, what exactly you, the program or where you're working right now, and we'll take it from there. Any other questions? Uh, that is all for now. Well, I would say just to reiterate what my, what Samaya said, definitely let us know. Let us know um, if you do with your name, phone number, and program of interest if you are working right now. Let us know the facility that you're working at, um, or if you have any additional questions. This is still the email address. Um, otherwise, I would say, Samaya, did you have anything in addition you wanted to add? Um, I just want to repeat 
again saying that we're planning to start um, in November EKG and phlebotomy separate on the weekends. And um, if you, if any of you or you people you know have already seen a certification uh, certificate and working and would like to get to the next step of next step working at the hospital, we are planning to start a fast track patient care technician in November. And it's going to be evening class. If you're interested or somebody else that you know that interested, let us know, let them know about our programs and um, we'll take it from there. And any questions, please uh, email me or Betsy. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, again, we are here for you. So give us a drop us a line. Just make sure you include the information that we had here so that we have what we need to aid you. OK, I'm going to stop recording now. Those are some great questions. Thank you. I even learned stuff. Thank you so much. Maya is the Maya is the or so Maya is the uh, the professional. So take care. Have a great weekend, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Madeline, for helping too. Thank you, Madeline. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Let's say I'm running to class, okay? <laughs> Got it. That's cool. I'm Let's just trying to figure I want to make sure that I have all the comments. Okay, excellent. And then hopefully I can get all the participants as well. All right. Three participants. Nice. There were 37 at one point. 37. Yeah, oh. which isn't bad. It's great. It's great. Yeah. I hope okay. uh, we'll give enough information for students to. I do too. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I mean, we'll incorporate some of the questions into the next one. Too. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.